I reckon the town hall's probably the most uh, attractive buildings in Luton. It's got the most character. It's not like made of concrete totally. It's um, it's a good point for uh, meeting people or directing people because you can say you go left at the town hall, right at the town hall, or on the street down the middle of the town hall. It's. <laughs> It's very handy in the centre of town, but I think we could do with a much wider shopping centre. I don't think they'll move it now. It's a, it's a landmark, Luton, yeah, I think. Yeah, town hall. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's got a town hall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's quite a pretty building. Um, it's not much we can really say on it. The clock's nice, so it lights up at night. And it's got access for people with disabilities. That's about it, really. My honest opinion on Luton Town Hall, um, I think it's a bit of an eyesore, really. Um, it needs modernisation, cleaning up, painting, it needs something to do to it. It's just there, isn't it? I mean, now it's a pedestrian area here. It's right at the end, everybody sees it who comes to Luton. I don't think it's a good thing to say, come to Luton. I think where this uh, building succeeds for me is the first glimpse that you get of it at the end of uh, George Street, uh, where what you see is the tall tower and you see that topping a rather imposing portico and it all says to me this is the town hall i am in no doubt this is the town hall and i know what's happening and it's like a, a tall finger summoning me down the street which is really rather nice i think one of the ways that this building succeeds uh, when you get near to it is it, that it's actually a very small building um, but it appears from a distance to be a big building um, and it uh, is confined to a rather narrow cheese wedge site but it actually works very well there. My name's Pat Mackay. Um, I hail originally from Airdrie in Scotland but I've worked for Luton Borough for just over five and a half years now. Um, it's a very interesting job. Uh, I work as an electrical design engineer in the architects division. Um, uh, although the main function is, is to design electrical services in various, the various types of buildings the council has, we do get involved in quite a number of interesting and, and varied things. Looking after of the town hall clock has fallen to me. It was installed in 1935 and uh, still the original, uh, most of the original mechanism Certainly the, the town hall has seen quite a number of changes over the years, um, the, the changing face of Luton. This, uh, this brass ring actually tells us where the minute hands are um, on the four faces of the clock, which are all synchronised with, with this mechanism. Uh, it's vir virtually impossible for the, for the four faces to be at different times, such as the mechanism, they're all, they're all telling the same time and, and that can never alter. So, as we can see, we're, we're 19 and a half minutes past the hour and the next time this solenoid energises, that'll move the hands on half a minute. So, that should be happening any second now. And there it goes. So we could have a look uh, at the uh, striking gear over here and I'll show you what I mean. Well, that, that was timely, if you'll pardon the pun. Well, as you can see, it's very dark up here, but here we are up in the bell tower, which is a height of 44 metres. And this is the hour bell, the heaviest bell in Bedfordshire, incidentally, weighs over two metric tons. And they, these are the bells that uh, sound the quarter chimes. They're uh, made of an alloy of 77% copper and 23% tin. Well, that town of Hill was here when I came here about 50 years ago, but I understand there was one there before it, which was burnt down. So they wanted to give the um, uh, returning servicemen a party, and the council that were there then didn't agree with it. So, of course, Luton people took it into their own hands and burnt the town hall down. Uh, basically, it was um, the right to place because of the, uh, the fact that the Lord Mayor is... Uh, 
council to decide of this very lavish banquet for celebrate the end of the war and um, none of the veterans were invited so they took riot and burnt the thing down. There were two riots. The first in the afternoon took place at the very end of the procession. The procession had passed the town hall, the mayor had tried to read a speech and standing on a chair to do so he made a very good target for the crowd. The crowd surged forwards. The mayor leapt off the chair, ran inside, bolted the door and left the crowd in control of George Street with just three or four policemen to try and calm them down. The town hall itself was broken into quite easily. Apparently one of the policemen was used as more or less a battering ram to, to get in. Once in control of the town hall, the mob smashed up the banquet, looted a few offices, but then contented themselves in the main part with a series of speeches that were made on the steps outside the town hall, uh, airing general grievances about the problems of demobilization, unemployment, uh, and so on. The second riot was the one which destroyed the town hall. Petrol station was looted, a small fire was started, and with the fire brigade unable to reach the town hall because of the density of the mob, and simply because the crowd wouldn't let them get there, uh, the town hall burnt down. I love the town hall. I love it, and I think it's a beautiful building. If it wasn't standing here, there's, there'd be nothing in Luton. And it, the, the work that it is doing for people, I mean, a number of people who come in for help, that, that's what people want it for. But we also invite uh, schools in to the town hall and to see the way in which the town hall operates. I do think if they would ask to, to come in and have a look around, they would see how beautiful it is. Just looking from the outside alone, it's not good enough. Come inside and then the, all the beauty lies inside here. In this building we have um, many committee rooms and we have offices. We have like the mayor's parlour and we also has uh, several other um, little committee rooms where we keep our meetings. Every six weeks, we um, have a council, full council meeting, where all the business are brought together and to be discussed amongst all the parties. And during that time, I chair those, that meeting. The silver room is another splendid room and that's where all the silver is being kept. Silver is given from all parts of the world to, for this building and that's exactly where they are kept. From India we get some, also from Sweden and from all parts of the world and they are kept in the silver room. Look, the sleep out, I think, I was very um, happy about it to see how many people turned out to help us. And the sleep out really is to uh, raise awareness. Because many people live in Luton here and while they are in their comfortable bed, they don't realize that there are people sleeping out on the streets. And that's why the sleeping out has been arranged to make people more aware of what's happening around them because if they are comfortable, they don't see these type of things happening. Fire, 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 fire. 